But if you will, let me introduce my lovely wife, Melanie, who is here. Would you welcome her? And we've got three of our children here. Michael and his wife, Maggie, are here. Jordan and Carmen Ray are here. Would you welcome them this morning? Thank you, guys. Stand up. Good to see you guys here this morning. You know, I heard on the radio the other day that this was the 119 Neshoba County Fair. I didn't hear all of it. I just heard the 119. I didn't know whether they were talking about the temperature or the year. I think we got them both this morning today. It's wonderful to see so many people in Mississippians enjoying a beautiful day and this great event. However, while we celebrate and enjoy the event, we must never forget the veterans who made this day possible for all of us. We're so grateful to have Michael back from his second tour in Iraq as a sergeant in the Marine Corps who will be a second year law student uh, this fall. And it's great to have him back. We're so proud of all of our veterans. For more than 200 years, they have defended our nation and have, have ensured those sacred values of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for so many of them, myself included. I'm a product of a major metropolis, Tokawa, population 42. My parents never graduated from high school. My dad worked for the highway department. He died when I was seven. My mom worked in the factory to raise the five of us. I had to work hard. So did everybody. And were it not for the fact that we live in the greatest country in the world and for the policies that allow people like me to go to college, I wouldn't be able to stand before you today as a former governor and as a candidate for the United States Senate. While, while, so, while so many of us have been able to work hard and to get ahead and to do a little bit better than our parents have done, that opportunity is slipping away. Almost three decades ago, Ronald Reagan spoke from this very stage. During that campaign, Ronald Reagan asked Americans a very simple question. It's the same question I ask today. Are you better off now than you were a few years ago? No! Are your family and friends better off today than they were a few years ago? No! confidence in Washington today? No! And do you honestly believe the country is going in the right direction? No! My, my friends, our government is not taking care of business because it has forgotten what its business is. That's right! Its business is to take care of the people's business, not the yeah. special interest business. because I love this country and because Washington is broken and it needs change. Each day the American dream is becoming harder and harder to reach. A broken system in Washington has betrayed the very people who have made our country great. Hard working, hard working folks like us lose out because insiders get special things that we don't get. We can't wait for other people to act. We can't watch as Wall Street and big old profit from our pain at the pumps. Right. We can't watch for families who are working harder and harder, having a time getting by, while Congress continues to raise its own pay. Now, we'll get to the dirty old tricks in just a minute. Just hold on. negotiated in Washington. Mississippians are suffering because of Washington's wasteful spending, pork barrel politics, favor for the insiders and campaign donors, and too much partisan politics that are happening right now. now That's right! We can end the wasteful spending in Washington. 
we can stand for the working men and women against the powerful interest. We can change the way Washington does business. Changing Washington will mean a return to fiscal responsibility. Accountable government right. and leaders who will listen. Change will mean opportunity for all and a chance for Americans who work hard to get ahead. And where Lincoln called government of the people, by the people, and for the people is return. It is time to protect the values that we hold dear because for too long, Washington has been protecting the values of the special interest. It is time for that to stop. Hey, hey. We must stand up for the hard-working Mississippians. We'll stand up for the farmers in the Delta who work hard every day to provide for their families. We'll stand up for the factory workers in Northeast Mississippi whose jobs in the furniture plant have been shipped overseas. They worked hard. Their reward, cheap furniture in Asia, and an unemployment check that doesn't cover the bills. Right. Because Washington gave us an unfair trade deal. We'll stand up for the homeowners on the Gulf Coast who have seen their homes, their workplace, their memories decimated by the devastating impact of Hurricane Katrina. They must have access to multi-peril insurance. We'll stand for the families across Mississippi working hard to make ends meet. Year after year, their cost of living goes up. They work harder and are paid less. We'll stand up for Mississippi all across our state to restore the American dream. Because if we don't, it won't be there for our children or for our children's children. Now my opponent has said he does not know whether or not the country is headed in the right direction or the wrong direction. But I stand with the 91% of Americans who know that our economy is a mess. Right! Washington has borrowed too much money from and mortgaged our future to countries like China and India. They raised the limit on the national debt too many times. The dollar has gone down and the price of everything has gone up. And since Washington has failed us time and time again, these politicians refuse to do anything about these problems. We need leaders who will act in Washington. That's right! As, as governor, I made the tough decisions and as Senator, I'll make the tough choices. And you know that I'll fight for you in Washington. Give them hell! As, as, as I said, I'll get to the one out of old political tricks in just a moment. That's what they want! We balance the budget every year, cut over $200 million out of the budget. in state history. That's right! I ordered agencies to cut their budgets by 5%, and in my first budget, I cut $50 million out of our state budget. All at the same time, increasing funding for education. My, ad my administration led to the creation of over 52,000 new jobs, $14 billion in new investment, and the Nissan Project, which is the largest economic Thank you! It is the largest economic development project in state history. Right. And unemployment was lower the day I left office than it is right now. That's right. All this despite a poor economy following 9-11. Sometimes I disagree with my party, but I tried to do what was right. 